Afternoon, folks. I'm Dave Canterbury with Self Reliance Outfitters in the Pathfinder School, back out here at the Pathfinder School classroom. And I'm outside the classroom today in a small clearing that we use this area to build fires, build shelters, things like that, and do demo work. And we just finished a primitive trapping class here this weekend. And I wanted to shoot a video on a couple things that I was showing the class this weekend just to kind of pass that information on to you in case you couldn't be here. One of the things that I'm a big believer in when it comes to primitive trapping is that you don't need a whole lot of different fancy triggers and traps to catch animals. You need things that you can rely on that are easily repeatable, quick to make, and function well, and that you have a good understanding of. And it's really no different than things like knots and lashings. If you know a few camp knots, you can get almost everything done you need. If you know a couple simple trap triggers, and you can adapt them to different style traps, it's the same thing. You can get a lot done. And I think that most people who kind of do this stuff for a living and actually trap animals would probably agree that an L7 is one of the most versatile and effective triggers that you can use. But a lot of people don't understand one simple trick you can use to turn this L7 into an even more versatile trigger. So if you're not familiar with the L7 trigger, it's a very simple stake that goes in the ground with a seven notch in it. So it's just like you're making a normal tent stake. And you would virtually make a second tent stake and cut it off so that it looks like this. So if it was upside down, it would virtually look like another tent stake. It's just flat. And it sits inside when it's inverted. And that's called an L7. So you kind of have an L7 there, all right? That is your L7 trap trigger. Now this trap trigger works really well for lots of things to include fishing and blind sets on trails where you have an animal walking through a snare because this relies on the top notch being dislodged from the stationary notch this direction. So something has to remove this or pull this out of the seven notch. Now I showed a way to do that a little bit more sensitively for fishing where you actually end up rolling this trigger out instead of trying to pull it out. And the reason for that is when you have force being pulled up on this from your springing device or your windlass or whatever you're using for an engine, your dead falling weight, what happens is you have a lot of torque going straight up. So if you're trying to pull torque straight out in a fishing situation, sometimes that tug has to be pretty dang hard. And a smaller fish may give up. If you try to set this thing really, really light, you can do that, but you still have a lot of force pulling up and you're still gonna have to give it a fairly good yank to get it out. And sometimes a finicky fish will spit out the bait or drop the bait if it feels any resistance whatsoever. So a lot of times I like to make that thing just roll off so it will constantly move until it releases and there's no stop dead. It's just kind of a move and release. I'm gonna show you that today. But I wanna show you one other system with this so that you can use it for lots of other applications where you may choose to use a different trigger and something very simple will make this more effective. And that is to use a bait stick with this trigger. So again, the pretense of this is that you dislodge these two pieces, this one under tension, this one stationary. If you take a small stick and you carve a flat in it so that you can put that flat up into that seven notch and then you lodge the other seven into it like this, you now have a bait stick situation where you can put bait on this stick. Now you could have a snare on the ground and any manipulation of this stick is going to dislodge the two pieces. So it doesn't matter with that set whether it is tension down, dislodges. Tension up, dislodges. Tension side to side, dislodges. So it's a perfect mechanism at that point for lots of other type trapping besides just a blind snare or a fishing trap. Now I can use this thing for a net trap. I can use it for a snare trap. I can use it for a cubby set. There's lots and lots of things I can now utilize this for that I may not have been able to use it for in the first place. So let's talk about that for a minute. I got a spring pole set up right here. We're gonna set this L7 to the ground. We'll talk about the fishing application. And then I wanna show you how sensitive it is with this bait stick trigger in place inside that L7. Okay, so step one is connect this to the spring pole. And I'm using a green colored line today so that you guys can actually see it a little better. And I've put a double overhand stop knot in that line. And all I'm going to do is put a lark's head in this and put that around my spring pole just like this to jam that lark said when it pulls tight. And now when I pull this tight, it's gonna become jammed. That knot is gonna jam in there just like that and it won't come undone. But if I need to get it off, 
all you have to do is pull down and wiggle it a little bit and everything's gonna come loose to change lines in and out or retrieve lines if I wanna use them somewhere else to reserve my cordage. So let's get this on our spring pole. Then we'll talk about how we're gonna set the device up after that. Okay, once I have that attached to my spring device, I wanna bring that down at a 90 degree angle. And that 90 degree angle is where the top of this is going to come in. And so right beside that is how I wanna drive in my standing stake. But I'm gonna turn it to the side if the water is straight out here. I'm gonna turn this 90 degrees to the water, not straight in front of it, 90 degrees out, one direction or the other. In this case, we'll go this direction. It needs to be in here strong enough that the spring pole can't yank it out. And the notch needs to be low enough for the application that we're going to utilize it for. That should be good. Now, we're going to pull this line down as far as we want it. We're gonna figure out where we want to put the top of this L7, and we're gonna put that in with a clove hitch. So if this is where we're gonna put it in, we're just gonna turn one overhand loop in the line, a second overhand loop in the line, and we're going to put one under the other, just like that, and inside that clove hitch is where we're gonna put this trigger. Now, if I were setting this up for fishing or trail snare, I would just position that just like this, and my line would continue to come off of this, which I've cut it off and tied a stop knot in there, would continue to come off of this if it was going to be for fishing. If it were going to be for any type of a snare, I would probably connect that snare line directly to this line so that I could adjust it up and down to get the proper snare location and snare size that I want for the target animal. Okay, so we've now got this set up in a position where we can use this either for fishing or for a blind trail snare. What I want you to notice is that the line that's coming off of the triggering device or this top of the L7 is in line with the notch. It's not on the back side; it's on the front because that's going to force this thing into the notch. If you put it on the back side, it's gonna be trying to pull it out of the notch. You're gonna have a hard time getting it set. Now, if we were using this for fishing, I would have not cut this line off and I would use one piece of the continuous line. But because I'm gonna show you a couple different things, I'm gonna attach another line to this, which is what I would do if I were making a snare. So we're just going to take a second line and do the second, same thing again. We're gonna put a quick lark set in this with a jam knot. And we're gonna take this out and we're gonna put it over the top of this and attach it to the string above, just like this. And pull it down on our string, and that allows us to have a sliding connection that will bind under force. Once this thing gets really tight, it will bind up. All right, so for fishing, again, I like this thing at 90 degrees to the water. The reason I like that is because if I just set this trigger in here like this, and I'm pulling sideways because of the water's here, I gotta give that thing a pretty good tug to get it to release, okay? Even if I give it a barely set situation where it's hanging on the ragged edge, I still gotta give it a pretty good pull and it really doesn't have any forward movement. It springs back, okay? If I'm going from the front, it's the same thing. If I decide to put this with the water going straight in front of me like this, it's still gotta pull before it's gonna come out. Whereas if I wrap this string around this direction, now it's going to roll out of the notch until it releases, okay? So there's really no resistance for the fish at that point. Once he decides to commit to taking the line, he's got room to run with no resistance until it's too late. That I think is very, very important in my experience. Now, let's talk about setting this up for something other than a blind trail snare, other than fishing. In which case I'd move this up. This is why we put the sliding line on here because now this becomes my snare line and I'm gonna move it out of the way for a minute so that we don't have to look at it for the time being. And now I wanna talk about the bait stick edition, okay? 
Now what we're gonna do is we're gonna take this and we're gonna lock this into the L7, just like that. It's very simple. It's got a flat and a flat. It goes up in and the flat sits on the flat and it makes it very secure. However, anything that touches this, whether it pulls down, it releases. If we do the same thing, we lock it in and he pushes, it releases. If we do the same thing and the animal pulls, it releases. Whatever that animal does, he's going to release that trap, whether he pushes it, pulls it, or lifts it, or turns it. It's gonna release that trap. So now I can take this and put a bait stick here, just like this, and set my snare loop, which is now gonna be this cable, this cord that moves up and down the line a little bit. I'm gonna move it up the line a little bit so that I've got some room to make things tighter or more slack if I need to. And I'm gonna cut off some cordage here to make my snare loop with. So let's cut that off real quick. I would generally speaking, make my snare loop on the other end of this prior to attaching it to this line. Now for making my snare, again, I just wanna tie an overhand loop in this line and I wanna keep that loop small enough that once I turn it over, it's barely big enough when I get that turned over into a lark's head to get my line through. So I want two very, very small loops of line there turned backwards to push my main line through. And I know that's gonna be really hard for you guys to see those two loops, so I'm doing the best I can here, okay? And then I'm gonna take this line and run it through those loops, just like this. And that's going to be my snare. And now I've got a locking snare that will slide, but once it gets put under tension, it's going to lock that down on the line and then it won't move as easy. And the harder I pull, the harder it's gonna to be to make it move. So right now I'm kind of trying to leave it a little bit loose, just so I've got the freedom to be able to move this to make my snare as large as I want to. Now I would take the other end of this line and do the same thing. Double overhand stop knot for my jam. Just like this. Once I've got my jam, I'm gonna put a lark set in this big enough to slide it over that trigger. Pull my trigger down, put my lark set over top of it to get it on this line. And then I'm going to kind of shore things up pull things down to where they need to be, kind of work that down to where that stop knot is real close. That's really close enough. Now, once I pull that, it's locked, but I can slide it, but it won't pull down the line once it gets locked down on it. So now I have this situation. I put my bait stick in just like this, and I'm put my snare here. Once I get my snare attached where I want it and adjusted, again, I want the snare, this bait stick inside the snare, part of the snare on the ground, part of it right here in the air. All right, guys, listen, I appreciate you joining me today out here at the Pathfinder Classroom for just a quick talk on some of the snare details with the L7 trigger that we spoke about in the Survival and Primitive Trapping course this past weekend. I thought you guys might like to see that. I appreciate your views. I appreciate your support. I thank you for everything you do for our school, for our family, and for our business, for our sponsors, instructors, affiliates, and friends. I'll be back with another video as soon as I can, guys. We'll see you then.